All right, now we're back to activation energy, temperatures, and rate constants. Here, we're given a rate constant, two different rate constants. And what order is this reaction? I hope you said, Dr. B, it's a first order reaction. You're right. Good. All right, so we need the Arrhenius equation. We've already done one like this. It's not too bad. And again, you can use whichever form um, you want. I like to just use the regular um, one that I'll give you like on the test. Ln K2 over K1 equals activation energy over R1 over T1 minus one over T2. All right. Okay, so let's match these up. Why don't we let this be uh, K1, this be T1, K2, T2. Temperatures do have to be in Kelvins here. Thankfully they are, so that helps. Now let's just match them up. So I'm gonna do it over here so I've got a little bit more room to write. K2, 0 0.689 inverse seconds. K1, 0 0.117 inverse seconds. Activation energy over 8.314, goodness, bouncing up and down. Joules per mole Kelvin, one over 400 Kelvin, one over 450 Kelvin. This is what I need to see from you. I need to see that you have plugged everything in with the correct units. The amount of work you show me after that is up to you. All right. And just if you want to break apart the logarithm, um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you. So this would be natural log of K2 minus natural log of K1 in case you wanted to do it that way. You can. All right. So let me take, I may do this in a different order this time. Natural log 0.689 divided by 0 0.117. 1.773. No units. EA 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Let me get an answer here. 1 over 400 minus 1 over 450. 2.78 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's inverse Kelvin. So those cancel out. All right, so to get activation energy by itself, let's multiply by R. So 1.773 times 8.3145. And let's divide by 2.778 10 to the negative 4. Whoa, not positive 4, negative 4. So that gives me 0.0. Not the right answer. Hmm. What did I do? What did I do wrong? Or at least this is not the answer that I got on the last time I did it. All right, let's try again. Did I plug and chug correctly? Natural log K2, K1, 1 over 400. Surely I didn't do it that badly. All right. Who saw me push a button incorrectly and said, Dr. B, you screwed it all up. Times 8.3145. And divide by 1 over 400 minus 1 over 450. Getting the same thing. All right. Well, roll with it. And that would be joules per mole. So let's use that and 
let's go with, so now here it wants to know what's the rate constant at 525 Kelvin. So we need to keep one of these. I'm going to go with keep K1 and T1. So this would be T2. And we need to find K2. So here when we break this down with properties of logarithms, all we need to do is add natural log K1 to this side of the equation. So we do that natural log K2 equals EA over R, one over T1 minus one over T2 plus natural log K1. All right, plug and chug. Activation energy that we just found joules per mole over 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times one over 400 Kelvin, one over 450 Kelvin plus natural log. Oh, there's where I made the mistake, 0 0.0117. I've done that before. 0.0117. Y'all just let me do that wrong. Uh, all right. So here, while I'm doing that, let's fix this. I knew I'd figure it out eventually. Thank you to those of you who are yelling at me, going, Dr. B, I knew you messed it up. All right. Natural law 0 0.689 divided by 0 0.0117 times 8.3145 divided by 1 over 400 minus 1 over 450. Hey, there we go. So how about 1.22 times 10 to the fifth? So let's fix that. Or I can plug this in 121.993. Why not? So, or this would be um, 122 uh, kilojoules per mole. All right, now that helped a lot. So natural log K2 is this number divided by 8.3145 times one over 400 minus one over 525 plus natural log 0 0.0117. So I got natural log K2 equals 4.285. All right, that is, oh, and here this would be inverse seconds. Inverse seconds. All right, now we're gonna undo the natural log. So that's going to be K2 is going to equal E to the 4.285, which would be E to that answer, 72.6, 72.6 inverse second.